Okay, so hear me out, right? I don't believe in past lives. I don't. I think I said this in the previous video, but I went in a ramble and went in a completely different direction. But I believe this is our first life. Like, I strongly, totally believe that. I know there's a lot of talk of past lives and this and that, but there's just, quite frankly, not enough evidence at all to show anything. And I've been in certain places in spirit in my mind, whether you believe that or not, but based on my own personal experiences, um, I, because I've been trying to find this out, you know, because the idea of po uh, past lives actually concerned me. It didn't really make sense. Something about it just wasn't making sense. So basically, um, I looked and I looked and looked, and what I found was that, like, this is our first life. Like, memory can't be deleted. Like, I found out that my memory can't be deleted. Like, it, I suppose the activity of your mind can slow down and lessen, uh, preventing you access from your memories and giving you, like, you know, some of these diseases, Alzheimer's or whatever that people get. I think that's when your mind just gives up um, functioning properly. I think it just gives that up. And, um... I think that's why the mind starts doing all these things, like dementia, whatever. Also, trauma. A lot of trauma and regret and pain that people carry throughout their whole lives can cause, like, huge psychological conditions. So I can see how that could actually lead to something like dementia and Alzheimer's and so forth and so on. Honestly, I totally do. It's like, once the mind just gets to a certain stage, if it isn't looked after properly, unfortunately, it can uh, do stuff like that. You know, I think it's like when the creativity dies in humans, like a part of their soul dies and their mind gets lost. To be honest, it's kind of sad. I believe there's a, there should be a way to heal it, but I know that a healthy mind and one that is able to resolve all of its uh, trauma would not be susceptible towards something like Alzheimer's or dementia. <clears throat> and then in the case of Alzheimer's and dementia, to treat that, you know, I'll say energetically, yeah, energy, because energy would give them new emotions, uh, reactivate certain dormant parts of their brain. But then it'll have to come with a feeling of like vibrancy and renewal in order to really like fire up those parts in their own brain and consciousness. And then after that, being able to, if you're able to rehabilitate them after that, then you'd, a, lot of, a lot of it would have to be like uh, trauma, dealing with trauma, helping them deal with that trauma, which I don't think anyone successfully did or maybe they didn't seek that help or have that help. A lot of the times, a lot of the help that's available, like professional help, isn't really helpful at all. <clears throat> because it doesn't take it, a lot of things into consideration. But I do believe anything is treatable. I mean, I treated my own <coughs> fucking interdimensional schizophrenia in six months, which is insane. That was the most insane experience ever. But it was very important for me to experience because it gives me a whole new perspective of um, mental health and how important it is. Because ultimately, uh, a lot of trauma can cause a dissociative identity disorder within our minds, and then that can result in uh, certain hallucinations and whatever. <coughs> I mean, life is a hallucination, right? But, you know, I'm glad it happened because it showed me beyond other realms. But, Jesus Louise, my mind broke in the process. It's insane. Holy shit. The fact that I managed to stitch it back together. Fuck. And I had to do it, like, intensively, continually, because it was agony being in that state, not being able to make sense of my reality. So I had to spend every single day uh, stitching my brain back together with each and every single thought, going through everything in my mind. 
And so I had to basically put a positive spin on everything, if you really want to know. And I had to force myself to believe only the best thing, like total faith. Because I remember this thing played in my head was something I said before, it's like unlimited faith or unlimited fear. And I remember during that whole process that when I was falling asleep, I heard that in my ear, unlimited faith or unlimited fear. And something like that kept me going. It got so bad that you know, just the idea of an eternal promise in heaven <clears throat> kept me going. Kept me going. Kept me alive. <clears throat> Saved it. <clears throat> well, I got through it. And then I realized, like, don't play games with your mind or other people's minds. Because minds can be very fragile. But I'm <clears throat> grateful I experienced this because I feel like having healed it, I have um, basically strengthened my mind. <clears throat> so I've because the reason for that is because I had to eliminate so much fear in my mind the whole time. <coughs> in order to, jeez, get out of the fear I was experiencing. I was experiencing insane fear. You know, for insane reasons, to be very honest with you. So in order to get out of that fear, I needed to have unlimited faith. It was unlimited faith or unlimited fear. The only thing I could do, I had to, I had to have unlimited faith. There's nothing else I can do. That's literally how I felt. You know? I don't know when it would end. The only thing I could do was have unlimited faith. And I did. And that kept me going. Psychologically kept me alive. Jeez Louise. And revealed many truths to me. And I'm very grateful for. And I've left me feeling in a far safer space in reality, in my own life, in existence, in the presence of God. I had to console every single aspect of my own mind. It was like a crash course of every single trauma or memory that I experienced in my whole life just in one year. It was fucking insane. Like everything that I've ever experienced just like in one year. Wow. And uh, there's a bit of sad moments that it's painful. Yeah, some sad moments. Man. Not gonna lie. <clears throat> but I got through them. With faith, hope. Perseverance. And I'm surprised. Or at least I was surprised when I got out of it. I was surprised. I got out. Got so bad. I remember hearing this one time, like, I, I took it as a message from God, but I remember hearing, like, what? what? Once is enough. And that also kept me going to know that I'll never have to go through that again. But somehow I'm not totally sad about it because it feels like it was inevitable. Actually, everything in my life feels like it was inevitable after that. It's just inevitable. It's, it's like, almost like a divine reasoning or purpose for that happening. Because the amount of stuff I've learned and the way in which I've learned how to control my mind and emotions and stuff is like profound. Seriously. So I didn't walk away from it empty handed. Actually, I walked away with, with a lot. So I'm kind of grateful I went through that actually. Jeez. I'm just grateful 
that I just knew, like, I just knew I'd be fine the whole time. I think that was how to keep telling myself that, you know, <laughs> just to deal with the fear. Yeah, you know, I keep telling myself that. And I connected to all these energies, high energies, new realities. So it came with a lot of gifts. And I see so much more clearly now. And I feel so energized because of that. I feel secure. I feel very secure. More secure than I've ever felt before in my life, at least, anyways. And I'm okay for to see there is a progression. Every contribution towards your own development helps. It all adds up at the end of the day. If you can see it or you can't see it, trust me, it adds up. You'll see it very soon after a certain point. You invest in your energy, your mind, your well-being, your spirit. Gaining awareness. And being able to deal with the hypersensitivity of that increased awareness. You know, that social anxiety or whatever. But yeah, I believe everything is treatable. I treated my own fucking schizophrenia, which is insane. I didn't think that was normal schizophrenia, to be honest, because it, it wasn't at all. That was the next level fucking multiverse of madness. Fucking in your face. Hectic. Like Twilight Zone 24-7. And I was conscious, and I had to still stitching my head back together every day, like, no, nah, this is happening, what's happening, I'm trying to explain what's happening, reasoning, blah, 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 I figured out so much stuff just by figuring out what was happening, about reality, I figured out so much stuff about reality just by, tr by trying to stitch my head back together, by figuring out what exactly was happening to me. <laughs> I don't know. I've actually diagnosed it. I can't just label it as schizophrenia. I do believe to some degree it was like a dissociative identity disorder, but it was like, dude, my whole mind had exploded. And then all these new ideas and thoughts, and then fucking old thoughts and ideas, and they're just bombarding you and just making you crazy. And that's why it felt like it was a dissociative identity disorder, because it's like all these fucking thoughts coming out of nowhere, man. And, and, and voices and whatever. I just started to realize were like echoes in my own mind. The mind's very powerful. That's why you have to take very good care of it. In states like that, you can instantly manifest stuff. That's, that's just a gunshot right now, <laughs> as I said that. <laughs> uh, anyway, I hope you guys you like this video. Click like, subscribe. Head on over to Patreon.